This is Dr. Ranganathan, Sweden Neurosurgeon, Astra Prime Hospital, Amirpet, Hyderabad. Now today, I'm going to speak something about the future of neurosurgery. You'll be interested to know. Because neurosurgery is a specialty which has given me whatever I am today, where I joined about 42 years back in the most prestigious institute of India, All India Institute Medical Center, New Delhi. Now, what I've seen neurosurgery of 1982 and what neurosurgery in 2024 and in future, there is a marked change. And for good also. Now, only one word about the scenario and the outlook of neurosurgery earlier was something like a joke, very pessimistic. You can ask me what is that joke. The joke is that the patient goes walking to the hospital for a neurosurgery procedure and comes out of the hospital as a dead person. Very bad, isn't it? But that's what the outlook of neurosurgery. But neurosurgery in the last 60 years or 50 plus years is a dramatic change. I will attribute to the great innovations happening all over the world. And the first and the greatest innovation has been the invention of the CT scan, computerized axial tomography in the year 1971. And what a turn of events to neurosurgery. And subsequently, you call it the MRI 1979 or the PET scan. And of course, now the every further investigations, they are all adding uh, to the betterment of neurosurgery. And neurosurgery today is not that pessimist, ladies and gentlemen. Neurosurgery today is the patient not only what you call earlier, there are some patients used to attendance at least, used to accept, okay, the life is saved and he is better, let's hope, even with the weakness of the one side of the body. Now, today, after the procedure, patient is operated, improving and going back to the office at the earliest possible time. And what a change. All this invasion with the diagnostics, and the new techniques like the neuronavigation, because the precision of neurosurgery has increased leaps and bounds. And the Tosa machine, wherein the tumor is sucked out without touching the brain di directly, has helped in easing the time, L loss of blood is reduced, and also the patient recovery is very ensured. Neuroanesthesia, tremendous improvement. So it's a, such a happy scene with all the tension in the minds of the family before surgery. And the way surgery finishes after five hours, six hours, and the patient speaks on the table, what more happiness the attendants will have? And that is happening today in more than 90 to 95 percent of the patients. This is not exaggeration, let me honest, admit a very scientific data. Added to that, I'll say in the last uh, few months in 2024, a further golden period for neurosurgery. You can ask me how. And in January 2024, and the greatest innovation, I think, uh, is what is called from the neural, neural link from Elon Musk, a neuro chip implantation into the brain with multiple threads like electrodes. And a person who was quadriplegic without moving any ability of the limbs was able to move the cursor, computer cursor, with the Information coming from to the brain, to the cursor, it is channelized as a, a movement. And he was able to, what you call, do things what he wanted, reasonably. He may not be moving the lands, but he is able to move the cursor and the, whatever the instructions and all, he can type it out. That's the greatest innovation. Of course, there are certain limitations, more improvements are required. Initially, there was a lot of pessimism, patients may die and all, and the cost, even though the cost is a problem, but definitely it's going to stay in the armamentarium of neuroside. And the second important thing which has happened in June, few days back, couple of days back, was the possibility of a head transplant. It looks like a fiction story in the novel, it's really not so. And that's what one of the, again, another uh, starter by name, NeuroBridge, in charge, or coordinator by name, Al-Hashmi says that in the next six years, 
a person whose brain is damaged because of either any of the either cancer, Alzheimer's disease, or brain degenerative brain disease, can be implanted with a patient who unfortunately died because of the accident, otherwise a young brain, and the young brain can be transplanted into the brain which is otherwise da deranged or damaged. And mm -hmm. that looks a great thing. But of course, to fructify that, they have done a lot of work with the project of nanotechnology and also the uh, robots, everything, but artificial intelligence together, coupling together, but we have to wait for the next six years. And one more important information that has come, and this is again a, a scientific prediction by a gentleman by called Ray Kurvas. Uh, Ray Kurvel is a great predictionist. He's a what you call a, a scientific uh, fiction person. He predicts. And you can imagine, I would rather argue with me that in science, where is the place for fiction or prediction? That is in uh, what you call astrology. But that is also happening in science. Uh, Ray Kurvel is a computer scientist, a 76 year old gentleman based in America, born as a Jew, a very bright, knowledgeable person. And 2004, he released a book by name, The Singularity is Near. And in 2024, last month, he came out with another edition of that, the new, what you call it, The Singularity is Nearer. I'll tell, tell you a little more about the singularity. Singularity is where an individual's human intelligence, what the God Almighty has created, if coupled with artificial intelligence, we are all talking about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence now, just going around in every field, starting from the designing to the medical technology, to the road laying, anything technology, or the deep fakes for the head, artificial intelligence is uh, taking the stage, central stage. So with this artificial intelligence, nano robots, and of course, the technology in the diagnostics, the head is going to be transplanted soon. Now, Ray Kurvel, as I said, has predicted about 147 predictions. And you will be interested to know, 86% of the predictions have come true. Now, he predicts that by 2045, the human intelligence is going to couple with artificial intelligence. Though the intelligence of the human beings is going to increase billions of times. Very great, isn't it? Yes, it is. Please be don't under the impression oh, that is a, a fiction. Artificial intelligence is already there. So the artificial intelligence is there and the human intelligence is anyway there. And the joining of this, there are some skeptics are putting a question. Now, the artificial intelligence is through the machine, right? Through the computer. How is it going to enter? That's what the Ray Kurvel says. It's going to happen. And by virtue of that, there are nothing impossible for the human being. He can do anything. That's what the prediction is. And also, he was talking very highly about the nano robots. Nano robots are extremely small, microscopic robots. You can travel in the blood vessels of the body. And they deliver a medicine to a very specific point, what is called target target. And this is great, isn't it? So the nano robots, to, for your information, are such a small structures. A one, 10 lakhs of a millimeter. Now, millimeter itself is small. And in that 10 lakhs of that, the part, the part is sur surprising, isn't it? So, 2045, he says that People may not have death due to the natural cause. Suppose that somebody had what you call a brain tumor or some other stroke or some other problem. He may not be able to guarantee at this point of time. But probably because of the aging process, let me clarify this point. Because of the aging process, people who, what you call, we talk about age-related issues, which people are not going to die anymore. Now, again, there are people who can argue the already the world is loaded with uh, population and people are not dying. And that goes against the principles of Bhagavad Gita. Anybody who live, comes into this world has to live the world someday. So, but we have to wait. Science is progressing so rapidly. So, 2045 is going to be a great milestone again in neuroscience. 
And again, I'll tell you, there is an important information that people who are vision loss, blind, can get back vision. And they, you don't believe this. What when uh, Elon Musk has said sometime back in January, he's trying in that. People had took him up. Oh, he is a cranky fellow and he will say all that. But now, there are four or five companies in the world. One is in the Chicago-based company, in the Institute of Illinois. The other is in Spain. The second again in America, that is in California. And of course, Neuralink also, they are also working. And they say that people who are blind, particularly because of some cause, which is otherwise a known problem and became blind, can have vision. With the implantation of a brain chip, and that chip access uh, sends stimulations to the brain, particularly the visual cortex. In the brain, there is an area called visual cortex, which is important for the vision. That is bypassing the retina. All of us know that there is an optic nerve which carries the impulses of the light to a what to call a membrane or a what to call a screen called retina. And that's how you can see things. That's what the conventional vision is. But now, bypassing this optic nerve, whether it's damaged or not, working or not, and the retina, the, directly because of putting the chip, the stimulations produces a visual impression, even otherwise blind person. And that produces visual impressions. And Elon Musk, again, goes out of the way, again, one more step. He says, even born blind people, I repeat, he says, born blind people, will be able to see because of his new technique that we have to see how Neuralink is going to be successful. This will help definitely, you know, India has one of the largest blind people, around 8 millions. And in the global it's about 43 million, such a large population. And around 293 millions are moderate to severe blind. So it's a boon, it's a great, uh, what you call, news for the people that who thought that they are blind for life and they have no hope at all, no ray of hope of seeing light any day. Isn't it a great news? So, neurosurgery is going very, very rapid and I think that is the, as I said, this is the last 60 years or 50 plus years, a golden period in neurosurgery and I think that more and more innovations, be it the pharmacology, neuropharmacology, neurotechnology, neuroradiology, or any of these technology innovated issues are going to add to the feathers and neurosurgery is going to be a very, very positive, attractive specialty. Thank you.